Brooklyn Independent Television. Hi, I'm Ron Dodd and welcome to Brooklyn Review. Recent decisions by the Department of Education have changes on the horizon for several New York City schools. We decided to take a look at two schools right here in Brooklyn, and one of them is on the chopping block, Paul Robeson High School. It's set to be closed for underperformance, and Sherry Carabin visited the school and brought back this report. I was just shocked. I, 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 there was no other reaction. I just couldn't believe it. That's how 17-year-old Victor Rodriguez feels about last month's vote by the panel for education policy to phase out 19 underperforming schools. Rodriguez is a junior at Paul Robeson High School on Albany Avenue, one of the 12 high schools slated to be closed. I feel that the school has a lot to offer, so when they said that the school was closing, I was like, with all the benefits that the school has to offer to the community, how could they shut down a school like this? The 9-4 to four vote took place inside Brooklyn Technical High School at the end of January. With all those appointed by Mayor Michael Bloomberg and the Staten Island representative greenlighting the proposal. This despite loud protests and hours of testimony by parents, teachers, and students. Keep schools open! Keep schools open! They didn't really care what we thought. They just said what they wanted, and that's what's going to happen. So it didn't really matter what we did. Even if we didn't do all the rallies and stuff, it was still going to close. I never felt that they were, the panel was very connected to us, besides the four people that voted against the proposals. So it, in that sense, it wasn't really surprising. But in a sense of sort of moral justice, that people could really do that, it was surprising. Since Mayor Bloomberg was given control of the school system in 2002, the city has closed more than 90 schools, creating more than 300 new ones. In the case of the 19 schools designated to be phased out, they would likely be replaced by new smaller schools, many likely to be housed in the same buildings. But it's far from a done deal, and the New York City Department of Education is in for a fight. So what we need to do now is to keep all of these schools open. On February 1st, the United Federation of Teachers, the NAACP, and a host of city and state elected officials joined parents and others in a lawsuit filed in New York State Supreme Court. The suit calls for the vote to be overturned, charging school officials with ignoring key provisions of the school governance law, including failing to give appropriate notice of local public hearings to interested parties, and not doing the required analysis of how the closings would affect the thousands of students who would potentially be displaced, as well as how nearby schools that are already overcrowded would be impacted. I'm actually listed as one of the plaintiffs because the school leadership chairs are listed as, pl as plaintiffs because we were not given the information in the appropriate manner according to the legislation. We're optimistic that the UFT has a strong case and that something might happen to intercede. The Department of Education failed to respond to numerous requests for an interview. But Deputy Mayor for Education and Community Development Dennis Walcott issued the following statement, saying either you're for fixing schools that have failed poor and overwhelmingly minority students for far too long, or you're not. I know what side we're on. We have a proven track record of phasing out failing schools and successfully replacing them with schools that better serve our students. But those at Paul Robeson say it won't be that easy to replace their school. Teachers here actually care about the students. If you don't have money for lunch, they'll gladly give you money. If you need help with anything, they'll sit down, stay after school, sometimes with, and they don't even care. if they if. This year they said that they're not, they, they won't be able to pay for after school programs. I'm still in the student government, I'm still in the president of the Latino Caribbean Club. There's still pro, uh, programs going on after school, even though the teachers aren't being funded. Paul Robeson first opened its doors more than 20 years ago. Today it serves about 1,000 students in grades 9 to 12, mostly from the communities of Brownsville, East New York, Bedford-Stuyvesant, and Crown Heights.
According to the Department of Education, Paul Robeson has several problems. The school received a C on its progress reports for three consecutive years, although it was deemed proficient on its quality review, which evaluates how well a school is organized to improve student learning. Still, the review cited several serious concerns suggesting that things were unlikely to improve at the school. The DOE also points to the institution's declining enrollment, as well as the fact that the 2008-2009 graduation rate fell to just 40 percent, declining from 56 percent the year before. All this while the city's overall graduation rate continued to improve. A big chunk of our population comes in with low reading and math scores, so they're not really prepared for high school level work, and, and it takes a while to get them to a place where they're going to be passing classes and passing Regents exams. Our five-year rate is over 69 percent, which is higher than the, than the city's four-year rate, and our six-year rate is 99.2 percent. So kids tend to stay with us and graduate, but it takes longer than four years. There's kids coming in from, from being incarcerated, there's kids coming in from homes, from foster parents, living with their grandparents. The background of the students in this school are vary from different situations. Most of them aren't good. So you have challenged students that want to graduate, want to succeed, and want to do something with their lives. They might not be able to graduate on time, but in the long run, they do graduate. Although the Department of Education says there is currently no plan to use the space that will become available from the phase out, some at Paul Robeson believe the building will eventually be used to house a charter school. There's a new charter high school that's being built on Kingston and Atlantic, and Atlantic which is going to be, um, I believe the principal is going to be Bloomberg's daughter. One of the rumors is, is that they want to turn this building into a K through eight charter school that would be a feeder school for that school. Although charter schools are still part of the public education system since they receive public money, they are run by independent organizations and are not bound by the rules and statutes that apply to other public schools. It's not like they're an evil thing. I mean some of them are very successful. I think it's just intention and if, if the intention is to screen kids so much that you're not, that a big part of it, if the intention is to privatize public education, then that's not a good thing. Should the plan to phase out the 19 schools succeed, the current students will be allowed to graduate, but no new students will be allowed to enroll. Everybody's worrying about the kids that we get to graduate, so that's the bottom line. That's, that's the end of it. That's not the end of it because um, they don't realize that after I graduate next year, and 20 years after that, I won't have a school to come back to and have a high school reunion. As the fight continues, Paul Robeson's longtime principal, Ira Weston, appears to be the first casualty. Days after the vote, he was removed from the school and is reportedly under investigation for unspecified allegations. In the meantime, teachers like Siegel say they're focusing on helping the students who are already enrolled. We're going to continue to um, do the job that we're here to do to the the best that we can do it, you know, and, and take care of whatever problems we do have, you know, in terms of tightening up our, you know, just our instruction. I hope it's like an ongoing process. Like, I hope that they have to keep going over and over and over and over, and eventually the decision will change. Reporting for Brooklyn Review, I'm Sherry Carabin. Brooklyn Independent Television on the BCAT TV Network.